And in the good old days, when people died at 40 with no teeth, we would put mud or mortar into those gaps. Um, over time, we started to fill those gaps with sealant because it was easier, right? Some sort of caulking uh, or some sort of silicone polyurethane. But it became pretty clear that, well, if you put silicone or polyurethane in those gaps, you now have to um, actually replace that and maintain that, which would be a horrible job. And so the idea came about, as, as far as I know, in Europe in the 60s, about leaving the joints open. And this aligned well with the idea at the time of we're trying to get more ventilation behind claddings and, and acknowledging that, and it, this was a big step, right? It was the first step in a 12-step process. I acknowledge my cladding leaks. So once you say water's going to get past my cladding, well, then it wasn't as big an a intellectual jump to leave those gaps open. Now, that said, by leaving the gaps open, uh, it does change a lot of things. You get a lot more airflow behind the cladding. Absolutely, you get less, you don't have to do maintain those joints, yes. However, you may be surprised to know that if you have open joints, more water gets past your cladding than if you have sealed joints. Um, and so, that means that the cavity behind the cladding and the water resistive barrier needs to be able to be managing much more rainwater. Another thing is that now that the joints are open, uh, things like the sun can get in. And so now the layer that it's, the sun strikes behind has to be UV resistant so that you can meet the promise of low durability of a long time. 